Well, Dad, we're back for another episode, Talking Church. And the ten thousandth episode. No, not quite. Not this quite. is okay. ninety six. Okay. And so it's awesome to see. It's been a while since we've had you. We've tried to get you every month, but your travel schedule, which is part of what we're talking about today. But we were together the last couple of weeks and uh, an admission for those listening. I said to you, I'm like, I'm tired. I'm tired. And you don't get tired. And it's frustrating because I'm far younger than you. I should have more energy than you, but I can't compete. You just have so much energy. And so as I asked people, what are some topics that people wanted to hear about? Many people talked about health and avoiding burnout and just remaining focused. And you're one of the people that I think others look to sure. and they see how much you do. And and some people wonder, like, do you really do a lot? Do you just make it look that way? Or do you do more than you realize? And I think the answer is you do more than most people realize. They have no clue. They have no idea how fast you run. But today you're going to talk about how you run so fast, things that you do to stay organized, things that you do to stay healthy in family, in marriage, in ministry. You've not gotten bitter about ministry. You still love what you're doing. But... I, Again, I, I I admit that I you I were can't tired. Keep up. I can't you keep were up. weak. You were like weak. falling asleep on me. Don't say I'm weak. I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you said you go. I can't keep up. No. And you're not the only one. Your mom said that. She said I can't keep up. And every staff member that I've had travel, everyone on our team has said I can't keep up. Yeah, I can't keep up. Yeah. So why? How 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 can you okay. run at the speed? Okay, you first run of all, at? you have to run at the speed you're created for. And this is who I am. I really find joy and excitement in this. I'll never forget Chris Hodges pulled me aside once. He goes, Hey, you're way too busy. You're way this is not healthy. There's no way you can be healthy. I said, No, I am. I love this. I love everything about it. And I remember I said, if you go to a party with a bunch of people there, what are you thinking? He goes, Who are the three people I need to talk to? And then I can leave. And he goes, what are you thinking? I said, how am I going to have enough time to talk to everyone? <laughs> you know, it's just the way I'm wired. So first of all, you're you like just, Buddy the Elf in church. Kind of, you know, but you just have to do what you're created for and go at your created speed and do that. But then I have things that have I've figured out and I want to pass them on. And it's with joy that I do this. Um, I think, first of all, you have to be personally healthy, spiritually healthy. You have to have a healthy family. That helps you run fast. All these things are going to make you run slower. Uh, if you have a healthy church, a healthy team, and even a personal team, like a great assistant that I've talked, uh, can turn you into like Rob 2.0. I can become two of me if my assistant is organizing my life in such a way that I get rid of the little stuff and can focus on the big stuff. So those are the first things that I would say that have, have made it work. And without those things, there's no way. And um, let me say this because two people in my life have been the healthy barometers, your mom and you, uh, your mom, you know, my wife, she'll say like, Hey, you're gone too much or Hey, you need to be home for this or Hey, focus, look at me. You can't stay all night. You have to leave by nine. You know, I mean, so she like, and she'll even say like, I need downtime. I need downtime with you. So I, and I don't go, Oh, come on. I go, wait. She knows she's literally like a barometer. And if she tells me, then I know, wait, I got to do it. And then you, um, everybody's love languages are different. And your brothers are um, words of affirmation and um, gifts. So all I had to do is be like, Connor, you're awesome. I bought you something. And he's like, yeah. He's good for a month. <laughs> he's good for a month. <laughs> and you, yours were and are physical touch and quality time. And you cannot, I can't mail you quality time and I can't give you a hug or anything. You know, so you were like, I need time. And so you were my other barometer. And as you said, hey, 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 sometimes I did have to say, wait. And then other times I had to say, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. We need to slow down. So that's the first thing in getting going. And uh, well, so talk about that. And, and I want to get to the calendar soon because people who are watching on video, oh, they can see it. video can maybe see it. But um, it, if you're not watching a video, I encourage you to go to YouTube and check out the video of this because I'm gonna show you're going to show calendar. it. It's super helpful. But how, how do you prioritize? Because you're at the point in your life, and you know, I don't love using the word career when you think about ministry because it's not really a career, but of, of your calling to where you're getting invitations. I mean, we were just talking about it today in a meeting. Like you, you're getting invitations to do so many right, things. Right. How do you prioritize? I mean, in one week, we were talking about it. In one week next year, it was like five or six invitations to do different things. 
how do you start to prioritize that stuff while still leading a church and having multiple different ministries that you either sit on the board of or you're you're right. deeply connected to or funding through kingdom builders how do you decide well i have a mission statement uh, for my life and but the gist of it says as an adventure with the lord i exist and uh i'm a catalytic heart leader but the two areas are leadership development and missions Okay, so if it's leadership development and missions. Now, I would say since I did that, I have a third, which I didn't ask for, which is uh, Kingdom Builders anointing to help people raise resources. Mm -hmm. So I have three areas. So if it doesn't fit those three areas, it moves down the chart. And so it, it's, it has to be something that is in my sweet spot now. And then um, it has to fit in the schedule and even today i was talking about an event i was like i could do this and your mom was like no you're helping me that day and you can't do it and i'm turning down a speaking event engagement and they sent me a picture of this golf course we could golf at and everything i was like oh i can't send do me it. in your place i can't I'll do it i'll send you here am i send me so um that's how i focus i'm like okay is it going to move the needle and then um even with speaking in other churches our board said to me hey you know, we have over 8,000 people on a weekend that show up physically, you know, tens of thousands more that watch it. Travel when it really moves the needle for the kingdom. Don't just travel because you can or to raise an outside honorarium or something. Travel because you really think it's going to build the kingdom. So I've got that filter in the back of my mind too. Is this going to help? Is it going to move the needle? Um, those are the things that I look at. Yeah, and right now you're preaching about 30 times on a weekend in a year. 30 of 52, at, yep. At, at, at least at River Valley. And then there's Correct. maybe a few, really only two uh, or three. No, I, I was like I was like five churches was there that five? I spoke at. Wow. And then you take in a couple of like missions trips or something right. that I spoke at. So it was seven more. So it was 30 plus seven. So 37 of 52. Mm -hmm. So so let's talk about your calendar. You, yep. ha you have it's a right calendar here. sitting in front of you. It is color-coded with lots of different colors. You have lines and all sorts of things. Explain it. Yeah, so I had to see the whole year at one look, and it also allows me to plan it out. And so this is something I've said in the beginning. Put the big rocks in right away. And you know that illustration, you have the jar. You put the big right. rocks, then the little rocks, then the sand, then the water. And most people fill it up with water and hope to put big rocks in. I'm putting the big rocks in right away. So I can tell you right now, looking at this, when I'm going to be on vacation, when we're going, like I, people may not realize this, but we do an annual father-son golf trip. Mm -hmm. And I've already planned 2024's golf trip. And it, these are fun. I mean, most of them we drive to, but we've started to use frequent flyer miles. Mm -hmm. But I know when the golf trip is going to be. I know when our family trip is going to be. I know when we do an annual trip to New York and we go there as part of Christmas. I know, you know, when we're going to do fishing. I know... Uh, 4th of July. I mean, I just have it charted out. I put the big things in, color-coded. Then I say, uh, these are the dates in the in the year that I can't miss. Those are red boxes. Those are either Generosity Accelerators, they're Seek Week, it's Easter, it's Sparkle Conference. Sparkle or, Conference. It's all staff. Yeah. And I put all those in. And then um, we put in my calendar dates that I could do a Generosity Accelerator. We hold those. And then I have dates like, okay, Here's a date that is a fundraiser I'm speaking at. Here's um, something that I'm going at and I'm rep representing the Assemblies of God or it's a meeting that they're having, Okay, that which is our denomination. And then here's something that I'm doing on behalf of River Valley. And then I have my own ministry separate from the church, uh, Front Row Leadership, which is my books and my outside speaking. And so I chart that. And then I can tell at the end of the year, like how many days of vacation was I on? How many times did I speak? How much did front row leadership chew up of my year? How much did the AG? How much did River Valley? And I can color code it. And so, do you want me to show? Yeah. You know, so, which camera? Go like this way? Yeah, right there. Okay. So they could see that. And mm -hmm. if you could see, I mean, it's color coded and you see the red boxes and you'll see things on here like thousand plus. That's the conference. Like you'll see Dubai. I did a trip to Dubai and I was working with some of our missionaries. You'll see executive presbytery. You'll see, I mean, there's all these, and they're color coded. And then you'll see like uh, River Valley Church golf trip. We do an annual golf trip with just mm -hmm. people from the church and that's charted in here. All these things are in here and it helps me see where did I go? Now, something that is a fault of mine is I tried to have one week home in Minnesota full. And you say, one week home? 
it's crazy that I'll leave on Monday, Tuesday and be gone until Thursday or Friday. People don't realize that. And I'm working on the road and I'm working, you know, I'll get up early and I'll play golf and then I'll go into the office and then I'll stay up late and I'll work. And, you know, I, I try to sleep more than six hours and I can't. I mean, I just, I try. And I, I don't have that problem. The doctor tried to get me up. Like I was down to like three hours of sleep a night and I was trying to eliminate sleep. And the doctor was like, you'll kill yourself. Right. So I said, okay, okay, I'll sleep as much as I can. And I've stretched myself to get to six hours. <laughs> so no, really. That's just. I, I, it is crazy. Yeah. So, um, so anyways, I'll work and, and, and do stuff during the day, during the night, do this and I can quick on quick off. Uh, but this is my schedule. This has helped me stay organized and to be, to yeah, and the one, know where it's going. The one you have in front of you is 2023. You have a new one for 2024. Yeah. That's already not, I mean, not completely full, but almost completely full. And it's, it, it, it's actually something that's so helpful that I actually copied it. So I, I have the same printout. Yeah. And one of the things that I noticed about it is it just helps you make decisions better because you can see the whole year. Yep. And a lot of times people are looking at their Google calendar, which can go out to a month, and they're making the decisions on their month. Well, the problem is you don't know what were you gone the last two weeks right, or, or right. what's coming up. Were you up leaving the, the next week? Right, right. So it's actually helped me to make decisions of what, when we should plan things, when we can go on trips. And then also you look and go, wow, you know, obviously knowing your colors, what you have. I didn't take very much vacation this year. I was traveling, right. but I wasn't actually on vacation. And that was something that I noticed in talking with Mac, my wife. She's like, you've been gone a lot, but we haven't done a vacation. So here yes. coming up, we're going on a vacation because I realized, oh, just because I'm traveling doesn't mean it's vacation. Talk and let about, me give you a heads up yeah. on that. When you get your sabbatical year, for those that are listening, after being at church for seven years, you get a sabbatical for a month, okay? Most people in the year they do their sabbatical take the month but then don't use their vacation because they feel like they were gone like crazy. Mm. Schedule in your vacation and your sabbatical for next year so that you – Use it up. Talk right. ab talk about sabbatical here while you're on that topic. Okay. So there's been a lot of pastors who have worked for a really long time. They've never done a sabbatical. There's other people who do a sabbatical every single year. Talk about where you kind of land on sabbaticals, why it's necessary, why it's important, why seven. Yeah, my thing was um, give us seven good years because I ask everybody for at least four. You know, when you join our team, give us at least four. And then seven means you've really added value. Like we've kept you around for seven years, you've added value, and we want to reward that. We also want to say that you deal with pressure. The Apostle Paul talks about all the bad things that happened to him in his life, and then he goes, on top of this, I bear the pressure of the church. That's what people don't understand. They think, well, my job's stressful, my job, okay, but you don't have spiritual attack from the enemy, from the devil, attacking your work in the same way. And then the weight of discipleship that this person has never done, they could leave, they could walk away, they they fall, and you're constantly dealing with wins and losses, and it's just that Paul acknowledges it. So I just say, hey, you've got that stress. After seven years, you get it. You get a month off, uninterrupted, get away, go do it. And uh, for me, and then after that, every five years after that, the pastors get it. So it's seven years, and then every five after that. And I just think it's a stressful job, and it's funny. We had our all staff just recently, and uh, Gabby came up to me, and she, with tears in her eyes, she goes, I cannot even tell you how grateful I was for a sabbatical. My husband and I sat down and said, what do we want to do for the next 10 years of our life, the next 20 years? She said, we formulated a mission plan, but it gave us time to, I had nothing else to do but be with my family, be refreshed, and dream of the future. She goes, I am so charged up. She goes, what a gift. For our church, we have many youth pastors that can come fill in for Gabby. What would you say to someone who's maybe a pastor of a church that they don't have— uh, Bring you in to preach. <laughs> we got, you know what? It wasn't my intent. Of no, we have yeah. tons of yeah. staff that want reps on yeah, preaching. Go to any large church in America, and I guarantee you there are people that want reps, and you could fill them in. And what I would do is I wouldn't fill in with neighboring churches. Like, right. you know, like you're not like 10 minutes away from here, and you bring in Logan— what you do is if you're in Michigan, you bring in Logan or right. Iowa or, you know what I mean? And, or far enough away in Minnesota that people aren't like, we're going to quit your church and go to that one. Right. Bring in a guest speaker. There's going to be tons of people that will do it. Do video sermons. Yeah. Ask, ask a mega church pastor, say, because if somebody said to me, Pastor Rob, I'm going to be on sabbatical and I want you um, to do one where I could show the sermon. Do you got any sermons coming up that I could show? And 
I say, yeah, how about this week? I'm doing a standalone, like, don't speak vulture. Great. And then they could say, could you greet our church? And I would, I would do it. I'd say, hey, yeah. welcome to church today. Hey, we have, you know, so and so, you know, Zoe Church is joining us. We're so glad. And I get to preach for them. Hey, good to have you guys. Yeah. Boom. And, and now it took, you, it took you 10 seconds. It didn't change. And any our of church your flow. didn't even care. Yeah. Yeah. And but then it, I yeah. did it. Yeah. That's something special. So that's what I would say. Mm-hmm. No, that's awesome. And then the other thing is the church will not fall apart when you're gone. You think it's all on me. No, it's not. It's all on Jesus. And you have a job to do and you need to do it well. But the church will not fall apart when you're gone. Mm-hmm. That's that's so helpful. What are other things you've learned to avoid, you know, burnout or getting resentful or you know, just in the weight of ministry? Other hacks. I mean, you have all sorts of different things that you've done that have been helpful to you over the years in leading River Valley for 28 years, being mm-hmm. a pastor for longer than that, to where you can't run at the speed that you run at without being very intentional. Right. So here's something that my dad told me. My dad was an auto mechanic. And he said, when I became a pastor, what do you want to do? Do you want to golf or do you want to fish? And I was like, I, what are you saying? He goes, all the pastors that I've watched that last a long time have a hobby of some sort. And he's like, I want you to last long. And I was young. And I was like, I don't, I really, I think I like golfing better. And he goes, let's go. And he got me my first set of golf clubs. Hmm. And I was terrible. I was a hack. And, you know, now I'm like a nine handicap, which is still not where I want to be. But still pretty good. I mean, I was a hack. And but he was like, do this. Don't apologize. Take time off. And we found all the courses that would let pastors, you know, play free on Monday. And, you know, when you guys were little, your mom said, you can golf all you want as long as you take the boys with you or it's during work hours. So I'd get up early, play nine holes or I take you with. I found all the courses that uh, would let a adult pay and two kids went free and you guys drove the cart and you know yeah, we didn't like it at the time i wish i would have but you didn't like golf you like no. driving the cart oh yeah we loved you, you and you loved chasing golf balls I remember in the woods we, we were driving the cart one time i, I think it was where was it? i think it was at boulder point down at elko and we were driving the cart and we went up this hill and we were coming down the hill and we started fishtailing and we almost took you out and I you remember did. you were so mad, which I mean you should have been. And the people you, from Boulder Point, they go to our church. So well, it's, sorry, <laughs> but we almost took you. I just remember you were so mad, and we were just laughing so hard. And you were like, "You almost ran me over with the cart." I don't know how old I was, but I that was my first memory, really good memory on the golf of course. golf. Yeah, now I actually over. like to golf, but <laughs> yeah. So having a hobby that's been a huge thing, and then. Um, a couple other things that I've got before I get in my replenishment cycle, which I think is the key right there. Um, I control certain days of my schedule. Like um, on a Friday, if you, anything that gets scheduled on Friday, I control because I'm getting ready for the weekend. And so I'm going to say is the person life-giving, I don't want to solve a problem. I want to be talking to a vision or encouraging someone, but I don't want to do, yeah. yeah, Or, but I'm just saying like, if I'm on Friday and I'm meeting with somebody, it's going to be life-giving to me because I'm getting ready. That helps me to have a day that I control. Another thing is like, I say no bad news on Saturday, you know, like I'm just, I just need to have clear space and not be thinking about bad news. I want to think about good news before I preach Sunday at one o'clock and give me bad news, but Saturday, no bad. Those things have helped me, excuse me, to not have to, um, live in the stress of ministry. If you will, I get some breaks where other people, I guess on my team have to deal with it, but not me. Um, and then the big thing, which I, that's why I wrote this down. Like, I was like, I got to write this down. It's too important. The replenishment cycle. So I did a work away thing for two days and talked about vision, got my mission statement, uh, looked at future career opportunities. And it was like, nope, not this one, not this one. This You're in the sweet spot right where you are. And it was good to see like with data, like I'm doing exactly what I was created for. So there was a thing in there called the replenishment cycle. And it was physical, intellectual, spiritual, and emotional. And to me, it was like, these are the things that charge you up. You need to do these things. So you want me to talk about them Mm -hmm. section by section? Okay. So for physical, we've already talked about it. Golfing and working out. If I work out, my day is significantly better on days when I don't. Like this morning, even though we had all staff and I'd get up and get here early and, you know, all this stuff, 
I was like, all right, I'm getting up and I'm doing my circuit. I started the timer and boom, I'm going as fast as I can, you know, doing as, as much as I can in that time limit. And I was like, all right, but I feel good when my muscles are tired. I can't explain it. Even walking, like if I get out and I walk, you know, three, four miles and used to be Starbucks was two miles away and I'd walk to Starbucks, get my Starbucks walk back, but now it's not. And, but I, bike riding, anything, being active. And if I could say this, like physical, so many people get burned out and don't have the energy because they're out of shape. They're just out of shape and they have no energy and they're carrying way too much extra weight on them. And it just makes you tired in life. And so I get in shape, do whatever you can, start with walking, do whatever. Um, and it, it just makes you feel better. And then there's a lot of people like yourself that are skinny that you might feel better if you were lifting weights and just, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have a, uh, a weight issue, but like, and I don't even know what your workout schedule. We never talk about that, but like, I love that I get to do that. It's in my house. So that physical, any questions? No, keep going. All right. Keep going. Intellectual. So I found that two things replenish me reading. And I don't like to just read quantity. I like to read a good book, stimulating, thought provoking, um, that, wow. You, so reading a good book, I get charged up. I get done with it. I'm like, I can't even believe that. And by the way, I also read 104 old school sermons every year, which I'm up to 120 now this year already. But old school, oh, darn. old school are like, they've, they're dead and they're gone. Like, I don't want to read current sermons. I read old sermons and it's so much fun to read that. Um, but it, it charges me up. It, it's part of my replenishment. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is stimulating conversations. If I'm not in stimulating conversations, I start to get a little like, uh, I want to talk to somebody that, wait a minute. Well, I didn't know about that. Talk to me. Wait, I, you know, and let's talk about this and let's talk about this conflict and, and wait a minute, how did you know that? And, you know, and there's certain people that I just love talking to, you know, that are like stimulating conversations. I think right off the top of my head, like Rob Hoskins, uh, Tennyson. Mm -hmm. I mean, anytime I'm talking to him, I'm like, that's, oh, I, I, I want, don't want it to end. Um, I remember one time I went to dinner with, um, Dr. Wood and Richard Hammer, both of them brilliant, you know, Harvard, you know, all these just brilliant guys. And we're talking and they're telling jokes and they're so smart. And I'm like, I don't even understand your jokes, but this is so awesome. I got to look these stories up. You know, who are these people? Okay. So that's intellectual. Want me to continue on? Yeah. Keep going. All right. Okay. Then spiritual. So this replenishes me listening to praise and worship music. Okay. If I, so at my house, Sonos, boom, turn it on. I'm getting replenished. I travel with a mini Bose Speaker, I should be getting like supported for this shout out here, you know. I get, and then I have a Theragun for my neck, so I, but that has nothing to do with the replenishment cycle. Well, but it I does. travel, I travel Physical with it. replenishment. And I also travel with exercise bands because mm -hmm. if I don't have a good workout room, I'm going to get it in. I got it. I got a 12 I minute cycle. Too. Okay. So, but I'm going to listen to worship. I'm going to play that in the room or wherever. Uh, praying in the spirit. I'm baptizing the Holy Spirit. I have a prayer language. When I pray in the spirit, I get replenished. So if I ever feel down, I just pray in the spirit and I regularly pray in the spirit. Then I wrote this down and this was part of the thing that I understood getting to big views. Okay. What does that mean? The ocean, a mountain, an epic view, a lake. If I can get to a big view, something within me, God gets bigger. I get smaller and it replenishes my soul. Mm -hmm. And I just, I've, I once drove an hour to the ocean to have my devotion time and then drove back the hour to where I was speaking simply because I needed a big view in my life. And I was like, I'm one hour from the ocean. I mean, in Minnesota, you're not one hour from the ocean. I'm like, I'm doing this, mm -hmm. you know? And so that replenishes me. And then my daily time with God replenishes me, which is simply the soap. There's something about it. All right, the last one, and then you can ask any questions. Emotional. I get replenished when I finish a to-do list. So I write a to-do list. I'm the crazy guy that the first thing says, write to-do list. And then I write the whole to-do and then I cross it off and I start getting those euphoric, ah, I did it. I did it. I did it. And when I do that, I feel healthy and I, and it replenishes me. Okay. This is personal, but it, you're asking and okay. Having a healthy sex life mm. that replenishes me. Okay. And so 
because my wife is your mom, we'll just leave it there. And we'll... <laughs> <laughs> once but, I got once I got married, you you uh, yeah we yeah. we we talked about more stuff, but yeah. yeah. But not not very much. Not very to much. Be clear. Yeah, but <laughs> but more than before. You, okay. you you and mom did a marriage night. On, yes, and in, it was like you was like, oh was like, all right. boy, all right. No, but seriously, yeah. People are like, well, how am I not okay with that? A whole bunch goes back to remember in the beginning. I said, mom is my barometer and has the mm-hmm. ability to veto it and yeah. all that, and she doesn't have to run at the same speed as me. Mm-hmm. All that leads to that. Mm-hmm. Which also this calendar. Come on, let me go there too. This calendar leads to a healthy sex life because my wife has this calendar and she doesn't get surprised and she knows where I am and she sees the rhythms and she opts in on this trip and not this trip. Um, So, all right. And then number three, travel. Travel fires me up. I love travel. I just love seeing it. I love seeing the history. I'm looking for a sermon illustration at all times. I I thought about this the other day. I haven't met a group of people that I don't want to get to know, and I haven't met a place, like, a conversation I don't want to jump in on, and there's not a story I don't want to tell. I enjoy it. Like, I love it. I get done, and I, I, I feel so good, you know? So travel does that. And then last one, time with family. The, that, that charges me up. Interestingly enough, when I did this two-day thing, and for those that are interested, it's, it's thousands of dollars to do this. You know, it's not cheap. Um, but it was worth it for me. I, I did it. Um, they, they had a formula and they actually said of all the things in your life that you love and value, you need to give two and a half hours per month more to Connor and Logan. Oh, they were that specific. They were that specific. Two and a half hours. I said, literally, you're that specific. They said, it could be a breakfast. It could be a golf round. It could be, but you literally need to give two of all. They said everything else is healthy except Connor and Logan need two and a half more hours. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And so time with family refreshed me. But then I'm like, I'm, it's not a burden. I'm like, oh, I got to spend time. I want to. And the last thing I'd say is like, you know, I just, my attitude is I want to do everything. If somebody invites me, I want to say yes. Mm-hmm. And you're always like, you can't say yes. And I'll be talking to somebody like, I think I can come speak for you. Yeah. And you're like, he can't come speak for you. You know, I, I say you're the yes man and I'm the no man because, <laughs> I, yeah, I've been standing with you at conferences and you're like, oh, I think that date works. And I'm looking at your calendar. I'm like, how did he say that date works? Like, there's no Because you're like, but what if I fly in and I do this and I just But do how about this? Quick? Like, I started to do this and people don't realize, like, I'll even preach Saturday night at River Valley, mm-hmm. get on a plane, fly somewhere, and preach somewhere Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've done that in Chicago. I drove to Green You've Bay the other day. I just went, I just drove to Green Bay. Yeah. I got done with Saturday night service. Pastor Zeus was with me. We drove to Green Bay, and I preached a completely different sermon Sunday morning there. Mm-hmm. Went to the Packers game and at Lambeau, which was epic, and then drove back that night. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I think I flew out the next morning. Yeah, it's you. You always are on the road doing those things. One of the things you you shared with me once, you said, people who have moral failures, they love to travel and they love roller coasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said, I love both. And of those. they work out. And they work out. Those three yeah, things. Those three things. The, the, those are a, a big combination of they Correct. love the adventure. They love being on the road. They work out. They're physically healthy. They're you know they're in, in, and if your job puts you on the road, typically you have right. disposable income. Yeah. Right. So obviously you talk about all these things that you're doing, but have there ever been times that you felt pulled away from what God has you doing? Or is it just you've been so disciplined in that or feeling like, and I'm not even saying like moral failure, like it's it's an affair or things like that, but just wanting more money or or desiring something more. Yeah. I don't know, like have no, you no. ever dealt with anything like that? So first of all, when I go to speak somewhere, uh, it's can I move the needle? It's not about the honorarium. Like I remember I spoke for a guy on Long Island and I had a friend say, is that a big church? I said, no, it's like 200. And they're like, why are you speaking there? And I was like, because he's really good. I really believe in where God's going with this guy and I want to invest in his church. And he could go, huh. So it's not about the honorarium. Mm -hmm. It's about like moving the needle forward. Matter of fact, I did the thing in England the other day and I didn't even think I was getting paid. And then they, I didn't even think I was getting paid. And then they sent me an honorarium. So um, I'm not tempted in that way. I want to have integrity that I really did this because they were moving the needle and it was the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. On the temptation thing, I wasn't tempted down that road. But if you remember the story, I talk about the first time, like 
uh, somebody said something to me in a hotel, you know, a uh, guy was saying, do you want, you know, to all these mischievous things? And I was like, no. And I was like, I'm gonna travel with somebody. And so I travel with somebody unless I'm meeting up with a bunch right, of ministers. Right. So I'm not going to buy another international flight to London when I'm going to be hanging around with 20 pastors for the next seven days. Right, right. Like th they're my built-in accountability. But otherwise, if I'm just traveling around, two things, I don't like being lonely and I don't like eating alone and that part. And then it's just a safeguard to have somebody there. Mm -hmm. But that has been there and then mom, my wife being able to be totally honest with me. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I, I say this, like, I know people can believe it or not, but I mean, like, I hope you believe it. Like when we were getting, sorry, did I just smack that? I really smacked that mic hard, didn't it's I? Good. Sorry. Oh uh, man. I was like speaking with my hands. Um, Fine. when we were getting the loan for the building that we are, our Apple Valley campus is in the lending institution flew up here with all their VPs and I think they were giving us like $15 million. I forget the amount. And they had a key man insurance policy on me for like, I don't know, 12 million of it. Um, I said, I, you guys aren't interviewing me about my health. You've already done that. You're trying to see if I'm really living what I live. And I said, you're talking to the wrong guy. Don't talk to me. I said, take my wife out to dinner tonight mm -hmm. without me. Ask her anything you want. See if her spirit is closed. See if she's bitter towards the call on my life and what God's doing. And I said, and then after that, take Connor and Logan out for breakfast in the morning. Ask them anything you want. See if they're healthy and if they're well adjusted and if they love Jesus in this journey. Mm -hmm. And if, if either of them give you red flags, don't give me the loan. Mm. And they were like, wow. And do you remember what we did? We saw those guys at a conference. And yeah. I said to you and Connor, I said, go over to those guys and say, my dad said you can take us out for breakfast yeah. and ask us anything you want. You know? Yeah. So that's the, the, the spirit of our family is solid. We're, if I'm doing these things, you could open my journal for my devotional and you could see, like, mm -hmm. are you reading the word of God? Yeah. I mean, it's right there. For someone who maybe says, I'm not where you're at, maybe you don't have quite the energy, but I want to go up the next level. What would be a recommendation as we close of how, how do you go up to the next level? Because this this took a while to get there. You weren't, mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. were always full of energy, but it wasn't always like this. What would you say to pastors who maybe they're one step behind you or maybe they're right at the beginning and they just say, I want to move up to that next level of doing more, move, move level to that next level organization. What would be your message to them? Go to somebody that's pastoring a church like the next big jump bigger than you. So if you're 200, go to somebody who's 400, 400, 800, 800, 1600. Go to somebody and say, how do you organize your life in a way that you can be effective at what you do? Don't say, give me day by day what you do because they're going to say on Mondays and it's not going to relate. So say, what are the things that you do so that you're more effective? And you could ask them, just what do you do physically, intellectually, spiritually, and emotionally? Like, what is your replenishment cycle? Use that. Ask those things. What cheats have you learned? Those are, because all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. That's how you do it? You know, wait a minute. Like, and don't you think that you, you, you talk to a number of people to where you take one idea from them, you yes. take one idea from them. Because I think yes. sometimes people come up to you and they go, give me your playbook. It's like, well, you're not me. You don't have maybe the energy I do or you don't right. have the, the resources or you don't have the, you know, the climate that I do. For, for you, it's like, hey, well, what about golf? Well, we try to get as much golf in in the summer because we don't get it in the winter. And so everyone is different. But you take one idea here, here you take one idea there, and hopefully there's people that are listening today that maybe they're taking more than just one. But they say, okay, I'm going to take take an idea from Pastor Rob, implement it in my life ultimately so that they can do more. Yeah. Any last last thoughts? No, I was just laughing inside because I was thinking about we did that generosity accelerator in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And we've been teaching all day, 9 in the morning till 3 o'clock. And during the break, you go, hey, Tory Pines has a twilight opening at 4.10, I think. And you said, it's 40 minutes, we can get there. So we had our golf stuff and we literally get done with it, drive straight over there, play golf. Then we had dinner later that night mm -hmm. and we're like, let's do this. It's a cool spot. Let's overlooking go. The ocean, yeah. And let's have fun with this. Let's go. Yeah. And so we've been living that way. Um, so I would just say living intentional. You only get one shot at this. And yeah, la last night we, we just got to golf a, a really nice golf course last week. And I was talking to my brother-in-law last night and I was showing him pictures and he goes, Logan, 
whatever assignment God has you on, keep on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, praise God. But I think it's just being intentional to say, hey, we're doing this. Let's make it let's make it fun. Let's make it exciting. Yes. But we're going to, ministry is the priority, but those other things are bonuses. And yeah, awesome I mean, cause we were out there. I was like, I want to go to sidecar donuts. And so I'm going to get up early. I'm going to go sidecar mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to teach and then I'm going to do you this. You drove gonna... what an hour and a half one day to get sausage in North Oh yeah. Dakota? Yeah. To yeah. get our family sausage. <laughs> I was speaking at Trinity Bible college and I said, if I get up early, was I could drive it. It was an hour and a half yeah. there and an hour and a half back. So I said, chapel's at 10. So if I get up at five 30, I get there at what would that be? Seven o'clock when they open the grocery store. I get the sausage, drive back. I have just a couple minutes to get ready for chapel. I did it. I know and you Sam did. Johnson, like 80 some years old, went with me. He's like, you're not going to go alone. And we drink, and I bought $400 worth of sausage for our family. And my, uh, you know, mom, grandma cried and my brothers were like, yeah, we got it. But why not? <laughs> it, well, most people would say, cause I'd be sleeping, but I, that's true. I, I think it's so obvious that you're you're following after the call that God has in your life. And yep. obviously it's fun to be a part of it. I can keep up most of the time, but sometimes I do uh, need a nap or two. But I think it's been helpful for people. We'll be back again soon. Maybe people are getting tired just by listening to all the things that you do, but hopefully they can grab something and realize that there's more in them. That yep, if you, there can, is. you can organize and, and take care of things in your life so that you can do more things that God's called you to do. So. Exactly. Exactly.